Hello everyone, this is the fundamentals of logic. We're going back to basics because maths, although it can get very complicated, starts from some fairly basic fundamentals and that's what we're going to look at here. So what is logic? Well, it's the science of thinking correctly. Sounds important, doesn't it? So it's been studied for over 2000 years. It was first studied seriously by Aristotle, although there were a few people looking at it before him. But since that time, it has become much more ordered and much more well defined. Symbolic logic, which we will also be looking at, allows us to break down ordinary language and look at its meaning in a systematic way and that allows us to be much more precise about the arguments we make when discussing any subject. So the foundation of logic is statements. Statements are sentences which declare something. So a statement can be true when it declares something that exists or false when it declares something that doesn't exist but it cannot be both. So here are some examples of statements. February has 30 days. 4 plus 2 equals 3 times 2. Bill Clinton was US President. And tomorrow is Tuesday. So depending on when you are watching this, either two or three of those statements are actually true. But you'll notice that there are other things which are still sentences, but they are not statements. They do not actually classify as either true or false. Have you done it? Hand me a towel, turn the computer off, and stop the bus. Why are these not statements? Why can they not be true or false? Because they are either questions or they are instructions, and they cannot be given a truth value. So there are some kinds of statements that cannot be given a truth value, and these are called paradoxes. For example, I am lying to you now. This is a paradox. If I am telling the truth when I say I'm lying to you, then I'm actually not lying to you, and therefore the statement is false. However, if I am lying to you, then when I say I'm lying to you, I'm actually telling the truth, so the statement is true. So, for whatever reason, we cannot give this statement a truth value. It cannot be declared as true or false, at least not unambiguously. So paradoxes are one of the complexities of logic and we're not going to go into them in too much depth. However, suffice to say, trying to resolve them and how they work is one of the ways we create new ways of thinking. But for now, let's just keep it simple. So I mentioned this term a truth value and that is simply the idea of a statement being true or false. So this would seem kind of obvious but it is impossible to overestimate how important it is. It is huge. Truth values are binary. In other words, when they exist they are in one of these two states, true or false. Something else that is binary is computer language and the basic fundamental unit of computer language is the bit, the binary digit and that is either a 1 or a 0 and a bit is the most fundamental unit of information. It is the smallest amount of information where it is possible to communicate anything at all, up or down, yes or no, in or out, one or zero. So truth values are very simply the foundation of meaning. They are the only way that it is possible for anything we say to mean anything at all. 
So another complicated form of logic that we are not going to go into in detail is fuzzy logic. So I just said that statements must be either true or false. And in regular logic, which is called Boolean logic after the mathematician George Boole, this is true. And this is exactly the kind of logic we will be focusing on. But there is another form of logic where there can be degrees of truth. So, for example, a statement might be, let's say, 30% true and 70% false. So, this was first investigated in the 1960s, and so it's still relatively new in mathematics. It hasn't been fully explored, but we're learning more about it all the time. In a way, it's attempting to use the principles of logic on situations which are too complex to be broken down into the more straightforward Boolean logic. Perhaps, in fact, there is a Boolean output for this fuzzy logic and the problems it creates, but because we do not have the ability either in our human minds or even in our great computers to work out all the variables, we have to rely on this probabilistic form of logic where there are different degrees of truth. But again, we're not going to go into that, but I think it's important to mention that logic has progressed beyond the simple form of Boolean logic that we will be investigating. So now we're going to construct more complex statements and these are called compound statements. So in chemistry, a compound is a substance that is made of two or more different elements. And in logic, a compound statement is a statement that is made of more than one simple statement or as we will see, a simple statement and some form of connective. What is a connective? Well, some examples are words like and or but. And this gives us a range of different types of statement. And we'll look at some of those in the next slide. So what types of statement can we have? Well, we've already talked about simple statements, a sentence that declares something true or false. And following that, we have a negation, which is a simple statement that has a reversed truth value. How do we do this? Well, we might use a word like not or some other negative word. So in the example above, we saw tomorrow is Tuesday and that can be true or false. Let's assume that it is false which will be the case six days out of seven for anyone listening to this. So if tomorrow is Tuesday is a false statement, then if we say tomorrow is not Tuesday, then that would be true. So negations are reversed truth values of simple statements. Next, we have the conjunction, which is two simple statements connected by and or but. So, for example, I am coming, but Alice isn't, is a conjunction. And in fact, there's a negation in there too. You might be able to spot, I am coming, but Alice is not coming. So that's actually a conjunction with a negation thrown in as well or I am going to play tennis now and then football later. That is also a conjunction using and. So that's the form of conjunction, but we may also have a disjunction. And these are two simple statements connected by or. So there are two types of disjunction. There's one where it can be either or or possibly both. So, for example, I am going to eat pizza or ice cream tonight. There's nothing really that prevents us from eating both pizza 
and ice cream. So it could be one or the other or possibly both, at least in the basic form there. On the other hand, if I say I am alive or I am dead, well, there's pretty much no way it can be both of those. Uh, we're not counting zombies here. So that is an example of a disjunction which is either or, but not both. And this is called an exclusive disjunction. There's also the conditional, which is a statement that follows an if-then structure. And if one simple statement, then a second simple statement is the way it works. It's a way of connecting simple statements together in a form which means that one of them depends on the other for its truth value. And then there is the biconditional which is a statement which establishes a two-way relationship between statements. So the if-then clause goes in both directions in that case. So that's just an introduction to the different types of statement, but we will look at them all in more detail below. So, there are various more mathematical ways to deal with logic. Mathematicians like to be formal and they like to make things easier to write out. So, there is a list of symbols that we can use for representing different kinds of statements. We often use capital letters for simple statements and then we connect them by putting a range of other symbols in between. So, for example, the AND, which is the conjunction function, and this can also, of course, mean BUT, which logically is very similar or the same, is represented by this inverted V, or a carré or caret symbol. It can also be represented by the ampersand symbol, and either of those stand for P and Q is P and Q, or possibly P but Q, which is logically the same. So that's the conjunction. Not, or a negation, is represented by the tilde symbol, that little wavy line, or alternatively by that strange sort of square hook symbol, which I don't know the name for. So tilde R, or weird little square hook and R, means not R, negation of R. Next we have the inclusive OR, the inclusive disjunction, which is represented by a V or double line bars. And so that means Q, inclusive OR, R, stands for either Q or R or possibly both. So that's the inclusive disjunction. For the exclusive disjunction, we use an underlined V or that little crosshair symbol. And so that would mean either P or R, but certainly not both. So P exclusive or R, either P or R, but not both. And it's generally better if you're using these symbols to make your connective symbols slightly smaller than the capital letters you are using and obviously stay away from using V or any other confusing symbols as any of your simple statements. From there we can move on to the conditional which is represented by an arrow pointing to the right. So P conditional Q is saying if P then Q or perhaps P implies that Q. So if P is true, then the conditional relationship means that that implies that Q will also be true. It's important to note that just because we write a conditional out, it doesn't automatically follow that that implication is always correct. The biconditional, as you may also have guessed, is a double-headed arrow because, as we said, 
it can be a two-way truth relationship. And there's also another way to write it, and that is if. In other words, I double F, and this means R if and only if S. So R by conditional S means R if and only if S. And we'll go into a little bit more about what that means shortly. So we can also show that the biconditional is the conjunction of two reversed conditionals. In other words, two conditionals where the first statement and the second statement are traded, swapped around, and those two conditionals are placed in a conjunction. So, as you might expect, there are other symbols that we can use, but these are the basic ones and the ones that we will stick to in what we study 